हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू आवर टॉपिक ऑन फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स ओके सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड द एन टॉपिक इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन सम ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ एन मीनिंग ऑफ एन सो एज यू नो दैट एन आर नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल कंपनीज सो and i have also told you that these are not banks okay so these are non banking financial companies meaning they are not banks but they are into the business of finance okay so there is a question that comes in our mind that what exactly is the difference between then banks and nbfc right so this is a very basic question that everybody uh, gets and uh, therefore in this particular video we will discuss and we will learn what are the differences between nbfcs and banks okay so uh, let us begin so i have made here two columns uh, so here uh, you know here here there is a bank and here there is nbfc so uh, point wise we will discuss as to what is the difference between these two so the very first basic difference is that banks have the banking license from rbi okay and they don't have banking license this we have already studied so naturally uh, you know if they don't have banking license that means they don't they are not banks but they can do business into finance now since they uh, the banks uh, have the banking license they automatically come under the banking regulation act of 1949 whereas the nbfcs they come under the companies act of 2013 because they are the companies okay they are registered companies in india and therefore they are regulated under the companies act of 2013 now banks can accept deposits both demand deposits and time deposits right so demand deposits are your current account saving accounts time deposits are your fixed deposits recurring deposits etc okay so uh, uh, banks can accept both demand deposits as well as time deposits whereas nbfcs can accept only time deposits and that to only a few nbfc not all nbfcs okay not all nbfcs can accept deposits only a few nbfc which have permission to accept deposits that to only time deposits can accept it otherwise they cannot accept deposits from the common public then in banks fdi foreign direct investment is allowed up to 74% for private sector okay so if if it is a private sector bank naturally the investment can come from within the country or outside the country if the investment is coming from outside the country it is known as foreign investment foreign direct investment and uh, as of today uh, whatever is the government regulation see this can change in future but as on uh, 2022 the regulation is that uh fdi in private banking sector is allowed up to 74% we will learn the meaning of fdi later on in the next lesson uh, but for now uh, just remember this whereas in nbfcs it is 100% is allowed okay so 100% uh, 100% owned nbfc uh, by a foreign entity can be there so there can be 100% fdi in nbfc now banks are part of payments and settlement systems okay therefore they can issue checks okay the banks can issue checks because they are part of payments and settlement system okay whereas nbfcs are not part of the payments and settlement system and therefore they cannot issue checks okay nbfc cannot issue checks now cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio these are the regulations they are required mandatorily by the banks they have to maintain this as per the rbi regulations for nbfc crr is not required okay so crr basically this is the pure cash right we have already studied this crr is pure cash where slr is any liquid asset okay it can be any liquid asset it can be cash it can be gold okay it can be bonds government bonds gsex etc so any liquid asset so crr pure cash is not required to be maintained by nbfcs but only the deposit taking nbfc they have to maintain the slr okay the slr is required to be maintained by the deposit taking nbfcs now deposit insurance facility for the depositors is mandatory in the banks okay there is some insurance facility which is mandatory whereas it is not available for nbfc 
now banks can provide transaction services like right so they can provide the payment services transaction services whereas the nbfcs cannot provide the transaction services now psl norms are applicable what is psl psl is priority sector lending okay they are applicable to different kinds of banks for different sectors we have already studied these in detail okay we have already seen what are psl norms what are the norms for different sectors for different activities and for different types of banks whereas for nbfc psl norms are not applicable okay there are no psl norms here now see the entry capital in order to establish a bank is minimum 500 crore rupees see it is a huge amount so you need to have a minimum of 500 crore rupees for entry capital for commercial banks okay whereas it is minimum 200 crore rupees for small finance banks right so see the even if it is 200 crore it is a huge amount compared to the entry capital of only 2 crore and 5 uh, 5 crore for mfi so 2 crore i have uh, already told you that in order to establish an nbfc you need to have a net owned fund of at least 2 crore rupees uh, for other nbfcs and for microfinance institutions it is 5 crore rupees so see 2 crore uh, 5 and 5 crore are nothing when uh, you compare it with 500 and 200 crore so it is easy to establish an nbfc than to establish a bank okay so this is very important difference then the next point is that the banks cannot invest deposited money in share markets this is very very important so for example these are the depositors these are the common people they go to a bank and they have invested their amount in banks so the banks now cannot use this amount to invest in share markets they cannot play with that money and they cannot gamble with that money they cannot invest that money in share markets they have to use that money in order to give loan okay they can only do the loaning business out of that they have to maintain their separate account for investment in share markets from their profits now if at all a bank for example if the icici bank if they want to have their own investment portfolio like right they want to invest in stocks or shares so they need to have their own separate account right uh, like, like you know like a common uh, person or you know like a, a company so they can have their own dmat account separate account and they can do those investment only out of their profits so whatever profits they are earning from their actual business from their main business out of that profit they can do this okay this investment business but they cannot deposit but they cannot use the deposited money of the people in share markets okay whereas this nbfcs can invest in share markets okay they can invest in share markets whatever if, even if they are deposit taking nbfcs okay even if they are deposit taking nbfcs they can use that money for any purpose they can use it for investing in share markets and earning profits also now surfacey surfacey act of 2002 okay so uh, this is a basically I, i'll explain to you this later on also what is this act exactly but the surfacey act uh, is an act which was passed in 2002 in order to enable in order to enable the banking and finance industries banking and finance okay industry industry to be able to able to recover its npa loans okay to recover its npa loans so for example if there are some bad loans happening and uh, you know if there are some people who have taken loans but they are not paying back so they can uh, use the surface act and they can uh, do the loan recovery okay so they get some loan recovery power uh, because of the surface act the banks get that power okay and surface uh, in nbfc is only available for housing finance companies and not other companies okay so it is, this is very important whereas surface is available to every bank every kind of bank so we will study in detail what is surface later on so these are the main basic differences between uh, nbfc and a bank so i hope you have understood this and uh, we will continue nbfc in the next video also thank you